Okay, this is part two of some reviews um, based on some things I've watched thus far the past couple of weeks. Another thing that I watched on Netflix was called Indian Horse. And Indian Horse is based on this young native from, uh, I believe, in Alaska. Yeah. And it stemmed from the uh, Indian uh, war, uh, Indian schools, uh, Catholic. And this young man who had the gift of ice hockey, you know. Let's just say... This one cut deep. There's one thing to believe in something and you want to share the good news. It's another when you force someone to believe what you believe and you torture them and you beat fear into their being. You're killing them softly. That's pretty much what you're doing. And it's on Netflix. Again, it's called Indian Horse. I just saw it. It was I was out of uh, twists and turns, somewhat psychological. Because you're thinking one thing, and then you find out later, oh, this is what happened. Because one thing about uh, indigenous American children being forced to go to these schools, they were abused. I've heard of the abuse. Um, and this is why you have this generational post-stress disorder, or post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, this happens within a lot of family uh, lines, generational. A lot of it stems from abuse, and then it trickles down, and it trickles down, and it trickles down, right? And then some people can't, for whatever reason, they just have a hard time getting past an addiction or something going on that been going on within their family tree for so long. And a lot of it stems, again, from tragedy tragedy so I knew watching this okay well there there's probably going to be abuse going on let me get myself prepared hopefully they don't show detailed abuse just give us if if you have to show it don't show everything just let us you know have common sense because I don't need to see some child being abused okay I mean to me that really doesn't need to be in details so there was uh, children being beaten for speaking their native tongue you know many of us already knew that um, some kids being locked up in the dungeons or whatever because let's say they didn't brush their teeth or something for days um, there was suicide going on. I knew about that. Um, physical and sexual, mental abuse, you name it. Um, but this one character in this, in this movie, you know, he had a gift and everything. And, and it seemed like he was being shielded from what the other kids had to deal with. So I'm thinking, okay. Yes, there were people being cruel to these children, but maybe, just maybe, they're going to highlight the nuns and or priests that were not abusing these children, right? I walked away from that movie very angry. Very angry. And I, I think from this movie, you need to find yourself again. In order to heal from someone else's
intrusion of who you are. You have to find yourself. You have to go back and find who you are. And this man, when he grew up, he had to go on a journey. And actually, it felt like he was alone. You know, just from the artistic angles or the camera angles, you know, it was very artistic like. He had to walk alone, which he wasn't walking alone, by the way. But you sh it was kind of like the dark night of the soul kind of feeling. That's, 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 what that, that's what comes to mind when I was watching this movie. The dark night of the soul. So towards the end, something happened that uh, we, I think we all can relate to as far as finding yourself again. Because uh, when you find yourself and you identify with who you truly are and you tap back into that again, that's where true healing begins. When you're trying to be in someone else's world, someone else's domain, yes, you learn Yes, it strengthens you, but that sometimes it breaks you. Sometimes it's the, the act of breaking someone's spirit is their uh, success. When they break your spirit, it's their success. I would challenge people to take what someone thought they were going to use against you for bad and flip it on them and make it good. So there was a, there was a twist in this movie that hurt me uh, because I, be I truly believe everyone's not going to believe the same thing you believe. You know, people have different belief systems. I get it. And when they truly believe they're doing it uh, for your good, they're trying to share something that they believe will help you for your good. That does not harm you. OK, but it's a, a, a piece of the puzzle of the great mystery. Right. I believe it can be it can be beneficial. Not tearing someone's spirit down. And making them do things a certain way, that breaks a that breaks a person's spirit. But if it can add to the collective, if it can add to your walk, then utilize the highlights of what that was and build upon it. So you and I and everyone else can find ourselves, right? But sometimes people get lost in someone else's success that was meant to bring harm to them, to you, to me. Sometimes people, including myself, get lost in someone else's success of tearing another person's down, be it their belief, their culture, their history, their skin, whatever. Sometimes we get lost in another's success. Time's up, though. Time's up. You take what they meant for harm against you, and you flip it on them. Sometimes bullies are placed in our lives to make us stronger. And they didn't know they were doing it. They thought they were tearing you down to make themselves feel tall, right? To make themselves themselves feel tall and the entire time they did not know that they were just a part there was just a piece of the story that was going to help you rise higher taller stronger more dangerous than they thought and so it made me It made me 
look deeper into the stories of my indigenous American brothers and sisters who are directly linked to those horrific Indian schools. I visited Carlisle Indian School in Pennsylvania a couple of years ago. I went to the burial site of the children that died there, or at least what they displayed, right? As far as um, the uh, tombstones. And myself and another group, it was like two or three different groups of people um, went there to, uh, to honor them. And we would place stones on the tombstones. And um, each tombstone, we would place a flower down for them. And again, a stone on a tombstone. And no lie, guys, there was a tree in the middle of this burial site. And the tree looked like it was, it was like the energy of those children and what they went through, that tree displayed it. I hope I'm explaining it as best as I can, what I mean by that. This tree hung low. The energy was low there. I took pictures of the tree and, and things of that nature. I, I believe last year they did remove the remains of the children and had them sent back to where the children came from. Um, I went to one site at Carlisle uh, School and it was where they kept prisoners uh, in some cell. They turned it into like a museum or whatever. I couldn't walk down there. I took a picture. I took a picture at the entrance to go down a few steps to, to look inside these, um, these um, cells. And I don't think the museum specifically said that children were held there, but in my gut, I believe they were locking children up in these jail cells and leaving them there for days. The energy in that space was very horrific and I didn't go in there. But again, back to the grave site, the tree alone, the tree alone displayed the depths of sorrow. I can never imagine what each and every one of those children went through. Being forced to cut their hair. Being forced to not speak their native tongue. Being beaten. Just being physically, mentally, and psychologically abused. And we wonder why, generations later, many of our sisters and brothers are struggling with some sort of abuse, be it self-inflicted uh, or what have you. But it's, it's a struggle for so many because it stems from trauma that happened generations ago. And a lot of people, they don't see it that way, but that's, in a nutshell, that's part of it. Again, the movie is called Indian Horse. It is on Netflix. I suggest those who care to know a glimpse of what happened to children in, in situations like that. Um, it wasn't just trying to Christianize them or make them Catholic. It was deeper than that. There's no way you can win someone over to believe in what you believe if you are spitting hate, if you are abusing people. You're putting fear in their psyche, in their core, to follow your way, your successful way of doing things. And it's another person's hell. This has been going on for generations with not just the Catholic Church, but many faith-based 
groups that want to force another person to assimilate. This is a never ending story for indigenous populations worldwide, globally. And I can't think of the name of the group that are still living in their tribal uh, traditional ways. I think, I want to say somewhere either in Africa or South America, anywhere. Once again, you have these missionaries that want to go in and tell people who they should be believing in and how they should live their lives, right? And these people have been around probably for thousands of years, living their own life in peace and harmony with the environment, right? And with all creation. So apparently some missionary thought that he or she or whatever was going to go in there and do the right thing, right? Mess around and got murdered. And they were warned not to go up in there, go up in there messing with these people. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. But yet, they believe that their God chose them to be the trailblazer to help people find God. It didn't work out that well for that missionary. Stop. You need to stop. Enough. Share. Great. Share what you believe is going to help you be the best person you can be. You can share it all you want. But we have free will. We have free will, and if you believe in that Yeshua that I read in that Bible, free will. He even said, let them, let the dead bury the dead. If you believe these people are going to die and go to hell, let them die and go to hell. That is not your place to force people to believe in what you want to believe in. It's called free will. And in your, in your dimensional platform or whatever you in, that's what you believe in. If it works for you, great. If you want to create a community and all y'all do is believe in the same thing, great. That's called a tribe. That's called a clan. Y'all believe that. But when you start introducing negative, dark energy into a space that did not ask for you, by the way, did not need you, by the way. That is not, I repeat, that is not the highest frequency. You know what the highest frequency is? Love. You may call it tough love, beating children, making them suck your genitals. You may call that tough love. No, that's demonic. That's filth. That's not love. That's not love. You introduced low frequency into a people that did not need you. Did not need you. That's how I felt about that movie. It's called Indian Horse. It's on Netflix right now. I suggest you go watch it and get a glimpse of what many people dealt with in the name of God. What God was they worshiping? Wearing all black. Just saying. The next movie that I'm going to review before I end this video, because I look, look like I have a good amount of time left on this cell phone recording. The name of this was called The Bygone 
B-Y-G-O-N-E, one word, The Bygone. This too is on Netflix. This was another glimpse into missing and murdered indigenous women, okay? And uh, once again, it's highlighting when non-natives take indigenous American women and um, sell them into sex trafficking or, or rape them, murder them, you know. That's why you have missing and murdered indigenous American women because some of them are just missing and they're in the sex trafficking and some are just probably being raped and murdered. And again, by non-Indigenous American men, primarily white men, take it however way you want to take it. Um, it's been going on for centuries. The primary people coming in and causing havoc in a community. It's on repeat, guys. Repeat. Ain't nothing new. Nothing new about the situation. Nothing. But anyway, this was based on uh, human sex trafficking and also murdering uh, indigenous women. And it gives you, again, a glimpse of the hell that these young women um, we're going through and in many cases are still going through and the thick mentality of those who find it their right to use a people and their women as if they were a ball that they take out and play a game with this is not a game it's not a game so anyway, you probably noticed this t-shirt I'm wearing, Missing and Murdered uh, Women, Indigenous Women. And uh, yeah, so just trying to highlight, uh, you know, what's going on. And not just in, a, in, in a one particular Indigenous American group or community. This is an issue uh, all over. And obviously you see Lumbee here. This was sold at the Lumbee homecoming last year. And um, I was able to get a t-shirt. And this lady right here is one of our little sisters. I adopted her <laughs> verbally. <laughs> she is uh, Lumbee. Her name is Amina. And she has a bright future ahead of her. And this is one of her missions in life is to highlight Missing and murdered indigenous American women. Missing and murdered indigenous American women. Hashtag MMIW. Um, so she is uh, one of the, uh, uh, I guess you could say, reps within her community that highlight that issue. Um, there were a few women within her tribal community that went missing and or were murdered within the last few years. It is not a joke guys this is real and again not just one particular indigenous American uh, population this is an un uh, ongoing problem you know that saying all lives matter black lives matter indigenous American lives matter Let's not forget about this tree of family, this, this branch. They matter as well. They matter too. Just women in general, the womb has been abused. And if you look at the earth and the earth being a symbolic for mother, for the womb, fertility has been... attacked for centuries and so again this movie is on Netflix as well it's called Bygones or The Bygones and um, that 
at towards the end of that movie, I was choking with anger and feeling hopeless and just I could not imagine. I, I really could not imagine the horror the people feel when they're ripped away from their loved ones. Treat it like trash. Thrown out like nothing. This this happens worldwide. But on a spiritual level, on a spiritual level, time is up. Time is up. 2020. Master number. 2020 vision. Back to the basics. In the system that was built on the backs. The backs of the original people. Ponder on that. The system that was built on the backs of original people. Is being bulldozed down. And all of us who were forced into assimilation will now feel that pride to go back to finding ourselves. Because the answers that we need come from our family tree, the originals. And we were forced, along with the beneficiaries of this system, by the way, we have been forced to go back to the basics, to find our true selves. We no longer need a system that has been draining our energy. Now, once we believe that, the rest is history because we will be going back to the basics where original people thrived. Being right position with all creation we're being forced to do that and many of us all we got to do is remember what grandma and granddaddy used to do we'll be just fine and the rest The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Just saying. Time's up. Our ancestors and all energy out there has been sitting back and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and to unleash time's up time's up for a destructive 
system. No more. No more. So again, the movie is called The Bygone. And it's based on human trafficking of indigenous American women. And um, that one cut deep as well. That one cut deep as well. And the last movie, which I'm not going to talk too much about, is called Burning Cane on Indigenous, I mean, on Netflix. Burning Cane, excuse me. That was very artistic. I didn't understand most of it. <laughs> I tried to look up what other people had to say about the movie. I was trying to figure out the plot. Did I miss something? It's just one of those movies that it was hard for me to wrap my brain around because it left you pondering. What just happened? What did that mean? Did that child actually get hurt? What's going on with the grandma? Why this person holding a gun? You know, it was just like, this too was on Netflix. It's called Burning King. It's based on uh, a poor family in the state of Louisiana and psychological um, um, issues going on with this family. It's like a generational thing. So you got poverty, you have a psychological thing going on. Um, mental abuse there possibly could have been physical abuse I couldn't tell but in my gut I felt like there was they just didn't show it and um, once again having a fear-based platform to lead people to live their lives a certain way backfired in this movie um, the leader in this movie, from the trailers, I'm not really giving nothing away. He was an alcoholic, this leader of this church. And so you had a lot of that going on as well, like this church leader not having his stuff in order. But then you know how some church leaders, is something that bothers them and they're always like out to tear down someone who practices whatever they believe is of the devil. And so it's almost like having people look the other way so you don't see what they're dealing with and what they're doing. So this pastor, he had that element um, as far as his character. It's like he dealing with his mess, but then he want to turn around and focus on someone else's walk and, and, and demean them and demonize them. And a lot of that was going on. So a lot of people's following his word following what he has to say and if you're dealing with someone who